In this video, we will learn about data frames in Pandas and we are going to work with them and be able to pull data, which are very helpful. Data frames are quite powerful and they are very similar to uh, data that's stored in an Excel spreadsheet, which is the most common way of storing data, uh, where we always have the first row as the column headings and also we might have indexes for the rows. So here is the link for our documentation for Pandas Data Frame, feel free to check it out. Um, but let's start to first bringing some uh, of these platforms. So we want to import NumPy, we want to import Pandas, and we also from Pandas, we want to import series as well as uh, Data Frame. Now imagine we have a set of students with three set of grades. So I'm just going to say grades and we have grades for student called Tim. We have grades for Isaac and we have grades for Juan. So these are stored in lists, right? So if I'm getting type of, let's say, um, Tim grades, um, I should get them as a list. Now, once we have that, we can follow the structure for data frames. I'm just going to post the syntax where we have data, we have index, and we also specify the column. So I'm going to say df is equal to data frame, and then we have um, the list passed as our data. So I'm just going to have a, a set of information here. Then I'm going to specify the index and I'm going to say the index is essentially this is data for Tim and we have data for Isaac and one and then the last thing we want to specify is columns so we say columns equal to and let's say these are grades for three different courses one is CIS another one is an accounting course so I'm going to say ACC and the last one let's say it's for uh, marketing so once we do that, I can now call my data frame and we see that now we have um, a data frame framed with the data that we had. So grades for each of the users specified by the index and the column. For instance, Isaac grades for CIS is 80, for accounting 80 and for marketing is 90. Once our data is in this format, there are many things we can do with it but there's also another way to create this data set let's say we can also use numpy array so i could have said gr uh, book is equal to numpy array and then pass this data set to it so we can just copy paste this part and then once we do that um <clears throat> this is grade book so I can say grade book and I can just call this so once I am have data in this format then we can use a similar syntax that we had above so I'm just going to say data frame one is equal to now this this array plus the index and the column that we have specified above so I can just now print df1 and now we have our data set if you want to check the type of our data uh, we should be able to see data frame here so I can just say give me the type for df1 and this is pandas um, frame and then from frame is its data frame if you wanted to check what the type of data set is here we could have said type of um, gr book and we see that this was a NumPy data array. 
Now, next, let's see how we can access these some of these values in our data set once it's created. So I am going to say how to access values in a column. So simply we can use an indexing in the same way that we were doing it in Python. I can say give me the values for CIS and I can also check the type of values that are stored in it. So let's say the values in columns. These are Panda series. So although overall we're working with data frames, but if you're considering a set of values, those are considered um, Panda series. All right, so we can also access our data set using um, head and also tail. Imagine we have a large data set and we want to get some characteristics from our data. This is only three rows, so it's easier to, easier to see, but using head, we can essentially return. Let me just add this as a comment. We can return the first end row. So if I'm saying, give me the head of two, I should be able to see the first two rows. Now, similar to this, we can also have, um, we can also use tail. So tail essentially returns the last end rows in our data set. So in the follow-up, I will have examples with um, larger number of um, data and uh, rows and this would be very helpful again to get a good idea about how our data set looks like so we had head and now i want to see the tail so i have the last two rows of uh, my data set pulled up if you don't specify any value you will get all of the values same thing with head as much as your display will show all right now let's talk about accessing rows in most cases we are interested to access different data that's located in in rows and there are two methods to use this we can use a lock method that gets rows and columns with particular labels from the index you can also use ilock which gets rows at a particular position in the index but here we have to specify the position of the index, similar to the way that you we were, for instance, doing it for Python list. So starting from zero all the way to the n minus one. If you're interested to see additional information, you can look at um, the links. You can also Google, but there's documentation to show what's the difference for these two. But let's run some examples with uh, first lock method. So for lock, the um, allowed values are, we can have a single label such as five or A, where five and A refer to the index, the label of the index. For instance, in this case, the label of, um, for each of the rows could be Tim, Isaac, and Juan, and we can get data out using these indexes. We can also use a list or an array of labels, so multiple labels, and also we can use ranges. So basically slicing the data using those examples. So if I want to run a simple example here, we can say, give me DF, and then from DF, I want data that's located into the row that's indexed with Isaac. So we see that we get values out. I could have done the same if I was using any of those values. Here we can also run additional values. I can say um, pull data based on, let me just copy paste this, not only from Tim, but also from Tim all the way to the last row. So if I'm doing that, I'm getting data based on the slice that has been specified here. And now in this case, if I wanted to pull data based on the index numbers, 
not the values, not the labels based on the numbers. Here now I can use an I lock instead of lock. So let's say, give me data that is I location um, and that is in index one. So here we see that we get the data that is in the first row of our data set. And this data is labeled as Isaac in not in the first, in the first index. So first starts from zero and this is the second row. Now, if I wanted to data from, let's say the first and the second row, you can specify a range where I can say start from zero and one and not including two. So if I'm doing that, I will get data from the first two row. I like will also uh, specify data based on the column. So if I want to get, let's say, say data from, I can just copy this. If I want data for Tim and Isaac, but only for, let's say the CIS, I can just say specify column one. So I get only the values that are for the first column. I could also only ask for values for the first two rows and first two columns. And if I want to pull all the data, although there are other ways to do it, obviously you can just um, specify no values. So I can say all the rows and all the columns here. So we should be able to get all of our data set out. Once we do that, once we pull our data, now there are many things we can do. Let's do some simple um, examples of the things we can do using data frame. So for instance, if I wanted to get the sum of all the values in here, I could have simply run a sum function. Or let's say if I wanted to get a description of the data set, I just wanted to see what are some of the characteristics of this data? So we can say df.describe and we see that we have the count. Now we have the mean for each of these columns. We have a standard deviation, minimum and maximum, and all the values related to the, the quartile. Again, for three values, it's easy to spot them. But if we have large data sets, which I'm going to go through, in other videos, we might be able to see the value of running some functions. So let's just now replace this with mean. I can say, just give me the mean of all the columns. And I could have also specified this a little bit more. So for instance, I could have gave more information. So give me the mean for the index of CIS and accounting only. So we get those values out using these simple um, lines of code.